Hello and welcome to this Electrical Science and Principles training video. In a previous video in this series, we answered the question, are the lights in my house wired in series or in parallel? And we found out that for the vast majority of lights, they will indeed be wired in parallel. So for a full understanding of why that is, please check out that previous video. But having watched it, you may be wondering, what about a situation where I've got three lights controlled from one switch? Are they wired in parallel still? We've just set up a circuit here that's very similar to one that we had in the previous video and you can see we've got three lamps here and they are connected to each other in parallel. So what that means is that the current is free to flow to any one of these loads as and when they call for it. The current doesn't have to flow through one of the loads to get to the next load and that allows uh, a couple of things. It allows us to have a constant voltage across each point in the circuit which means that if the lamps have the same power rating uh, they'll continue to shine at the same level of brightness and it also means that we can turn the lamps on and off as we want to without affecting the other lamps a crazy amount. So that is a typical circuit such as you may find in any kind of property, a house or a commercial or industrial setting. However, we're now going to kind of think about the situation where we've got two or more lamps that are connected onto one switch and operated by one switch and we're going to figure out exactly how that's wired up. So let's start off by figuring out if this can be wired up in series. So let's put uh, a lamp in series here. And actually what we can do, we'll change this up a little bit more even. And we're just going to put in another lamp here. So here we've got three lamps connected uh, on one switch, very similar to what we had at the opening of the video uh, when those three lights came on. So we'll turn that one off so it's not overshadowing it. Now can you see here, these lamps are on, but they are incredibly dim. So we've got these wired in series with each other, and we've got a situation where that one switch is indeed controlling all three of those lamps. So it is controlling all three of the lamps. You can just about see them going on and off there. However, we've come back to a problem that was kind of described in the previous video. We're in a situation where the lamps are not shining as brightly as they should be. That's because the voltage has dropped across each one of them. And also the other problem is if we lose one of these lamps, if one of these lamps blows, you can see that they all go out. Therefore, that is not a very clever way of controlling more than one lamp from one switch. So how can we make sure that these three lamps are controlled by one switch, but we don't get this problem with them dimming and one of the lamps taking out all of them? Well, it's all to do with how they're connected, really. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this around a little bit more, and we're going to switch these around so they look like this. And the method I'm about to show you will work equally well for uh, just two lamps or three lamps or four lamps, however many you want. Uh, and what we're going to see here is that uh, we're going to leave the uh, switch in the same position there, but what we're now going to do is we're going to connect up these two like so. So we can almost think of this as being like the line conductor and this as being the neutral conductor. And what you can see is that we're switching the line conductor going to these three lamps. So the current flowing through this uh, section of the circuit, this section of the circuit, and so on, will all be controlled by this switch. And then what we do on the other side is we need to make a connection to the neutral. So that's going to look something like this. And this is very much like that situation we looked at at the start of the video, where we had three lamps controlled by one switch. We wire the line conductor through the switch, and then we take that so-called switch line out the other side to each one of the three lamps. And then we have a neutral connection from the other side of each of the three lamps and going out to uh, the end of the circuit. So what we can now do, you'll notice straight away, hopefully, that those three are shining much more brightly than they were before. So that's one good thing. We've already established that that is not going to be a problem. We can also see that if I undo one of these, now bear in mind I'm working on extra low voltage here. This is 12 volts, so uh, there's no risk of me getting a shock from this. You can see there now that those two lamps have stayed on despite the fact that one of the lamps has been removed or failed. So I'll put that back in. And now the big test is, will they all three be controlled by this one switch? Well, let's find out. When we open that, you can see now the current can't flow across that bit and therefore it can't get to the three lamps and it can't turn them on. So here we've got the best of both worlds. We've got more than one lamp controlled by a switch and we've also got a situation where uh, we're not relying on uh, the, the current to flow through one of these lamps to get to the next one so it's not affecting the brightness and it also doesn't matter if any one of these lamps goes out. The other real advantage to this, so let's say that these are the three lamps that are over the uh, 
kitchen worked up uh, in the kitchen that we were in. Uh, the good thing is, is that we don't have to worry about other lamps not working on the circuit. So again, you can see that's now shining at full brightness and we can control these completely independently of each other if we want to. And we can just keep on wiring the circuit. So you can see that these are still wired in parallel with each other. So that's really important. So these are still wired in parallel. We've got the line coming in this side, the neutral going out the other for each one of those. The current doesn't have to flow through that one to get to that one, it can flow that way and through there. Therefore, these three are still wired in parallel, but kind of the, the thing to remember is that they're, as a, a bunch, as a group, they are wired in series with the switch, which is why that one switch turns off all three lights. And we can keep extending the circuit. So this lamp is still wired in parallel with the supply. This lamp here will still be wired in parallel with the supply. Now I've run out of these little incandescent lamps, so I'm gonna put an LED one in there. You can see that's shining a slightly different color. I don't know if that's coming up on camera, but you can see that we can still control any one of these lamps from any one of the switches. We can have all of them off. We can have just one of them on. We can have two of them on. We can do whatever we want. Each lamp is controlled independently by its own switch. So there we go, we've answered that question. Where you've got more than one light fitting controlled by one switch, those fittings are still wired in parallel with each other and with the supply. However, they're wired in series with the switch, which is how one switch can control more than one light. But you may be asking yourself, is there ever a time where I wire up lights or loads in series with each other? Well, for one example, as an answer to that question, check out this video right here. And thank you very much for watching.